Captain Chad Bryson, and today I'm going to show you how to tie my Chattahoochee Double Deceiver fly. It's put more big brown trout in my boat for my clients than any other fly I've ever used. So it's going to be a little bit complicated and it's a little bit long, but this is the end result. So at any point in time, if you got questions, please let me know. Let me know through in the spread. I'd be happy to answer any questions you've got. So first we're going to go over the tools that you're going to need. And you know, I know a lot of you have already got you know, an entire setup for fly tying, but what I've found over the years in tying big streamers, you know, especially like this double deceiver, you don't really need that many tools. It's a pretty simple process because what you're using uh, and what you're creating is not, it's technical, yet it doesn't require all the technical tools. So first and foremost, you're gonna have to have a bobbin with thread. And this is a, this is a ceramic tipped bobbin and I use the gel spun thread because it's stronger, um, wraps better, wraps cleaner, mostly because it's stronger and the amount of pressure that you have to put on the materials to get them to do what you want to do, uh, you're going to want that gel spun thread. So that's critical. Another, is a, another thing that's critical is a good set of scissors. These are Dr. Slick. A uh, good set of sharp scissors is imperative. You can get them at any of your local fly shops anywhere. Um, lots of different options, lots of different sizes, styles. I like these, they seem to work for me. And the other thing that a lot of people don't think about when you're fly tying, because typically, you know, people think of fly tying and they're thinking of these tiny little dry flies and nymphs, but when you're, use, when you're doing this big stuff, you're gonna want a good set of needle nose pliers for crimping down barbs, for manipulating your, your materials, for smashing the stems on the feathers, I think these are made by Rapala, I don't know, but they've got a set of cutters and a good set of needle nose pliers on them. Those are really the, th the three basic things you're going to see me use today. So I want to talk about the vise and what kind of vise that you're going to need in order to, to make these big streamers. You know, all of us started out with a, a, a clamp on, you know, regular post type vise. I think my first one was made by D.H. Thompson is how long ago that was. And it was a great vise. I tied a lot of flies on it and you know, finally just wore it out completely. And, and as, I, as I progressed as a fly tire, I upgraded my, my vise substantially. Now I'm using the Dynaking Barracuda. It's a full rotation vise. You're gonna want that to be able to, to spin your fly around, to look at it, make sure all of your lines are even, make sure that you know, you're, you're getting the right amount of hair in all the right places. Um, it's also got a hook keeper on the back so that you can, so that you can actually hold the the, uh, the rear hook for your articulated flies, and that way the the fly is running straight. Because if the fly is running straight here as you're working, you're going to be able to see a whole lot more about it and make sure that you're getting it done right. So, a lot of great vices out there. Renzetti, Dyna King is mentioned. You don't have to spend 500 bucks to get a good vice, but my advice is to spend the most money that you can afford to spend because you won't regret it and your finished product will be a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and get started tying. And basically it's nothing more than a, 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 an amped up version of a Great Lakes Double Deceiver that I've modified a little bit to, to work better on the Chattahoochee. And start out with just a basic Gamagatsu worm hook with a round bend and four off. And you're thinking, well, gosh, you know, it's trout fishing. Why would I use a four-aught hook? But, but you'll see by the time I get all these materials stacked on these hooks, it really turns out to be the right size and gives the right length. So we'll get started with those. These round bend hooks, these worm hooks, are designed so that if you're bass fishing, they've got these little barbs up in the front here near the hook eye. And so I always take my pliers Pinch them down real good because you want, the, you want the, the hook shank as smooth and as round as you can so that when you're spinning the deer hair, it spins around it properly. You use a lot of different types of thread. I like the gel spun thread. It's really strong. It goes a long way. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot stronger and it doesn't build up quite as tall. So you get a lot, lot of wraps and a lot of strength with a minimum amount of thread. 
So I'm just going to lay down a really short, quick thread base. And this is going to be the rear hook. This is going to be the, the rear hook of the fly. So we're going to put a tail on it. We're going to, I'm going to cover all of those things, how we select the feathers for the tail. And you know, a, lot of, a lot of times when we're thinking about fly fishing, we're thinking about tying flies, we're thinking about using feathers like these. And you know, these work for nice small flies, but they're, you know, they make nice hackles and nice wraps for your dry flies and your parachute flies and even your buggers. This isn't what we're looking for. These little tiny, thin fiber feathers are not what we're looking for. We're looking for this with the big webbing. This is, this is just a slapping hackle off of a genetically bred rooster. These make great buggers. These make great, uh, great head wraps for everything. We're gonna pick a couple of these. They're about the same size and exactly the same size and we're going to tie those on for the tail. Now lay them, you know, feathers always are bent they grow that way they grow on an angle they grow with a, a natural bend in them so you don't want them splayed out like that when you tie them on the hook shank you're going to want them facing each other you want them cupped in so that they stay so that they stay tight to each other just like so and i'll even take my pliers and just kind of bend you, know, you just kind of break that break that stem and flatten it a little bit. That way it lays down nice on the hook shank or on the right near the bend. So if you try to, I know you tried to do it, if you've ever tried to tie a round feather stem on a round shank, they roll around. They roll all over the place, and so if you if you fix them up, if you bend the stems a little bit, it seems to work a lot better. So I'm just going to lay it on there. I know there's going to be times that my hands are covering up a lot of stuff that you guys aren't going to be able to see, so I'm going to try and talk you through it and show you as I go. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm determining exactly how long I want the tail on this fly to be. You know, we're tying bait fish imitations. You know, we're, we're basically today we're going to tie a baby brown trout imitation here for starters. So that's about how long I want that to be. So I'm going to lay it there, take my wrap, just pull it snug. You don't pull it really tight, you just pull it snug, just enough to hold it in place. And then one, two, and then really snug it down. Come back and finish it off. Now I'm going to take my other feather. I'm going to lay it in there. Measure them out so that they're the same. And do the same thing again. One wrap. Just kind of snug it. Trim it. And give it a few more wraps and cinch it down. So there we have a tail. And the next step that I like to do, I like to start adding bucktail or deer hair. And the thing with the bucktail and deer hair is you get a lot of volume. You get a lot of volume with a minimal amount of material. And so what I'm looking for when, when I'm looking, when I go in the fly shop to buy bucktail, I'm looking, for, I pull them out of the pack and you have to pull them out of the pack and look, if you just go in there and grab the first bucktail in the color that you want off of the pack, you're, you're probably not going to get what you want. So I go through and I, and I hand select the ones that have these longest tail fiber, the longest fibers of hair. That way you get, you get a bigger profile 
on your fly using less material, which makes it a lot easier to cast. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wrap a little bit right in front of that tail. And it doesn't take much. It really only takes about a number two pencil size. So there I've cut it off right at right at the stem and you're gonna have a lot of under hairs in this and under hairs are like the new hairs that are growing to keep the animal warm and so basically I'm gonna I hold it right in the center and I just kind of flip it like so and it gets all those under hairs out of there that way your hair cinches down on it on your hook shank so now I'm gonna take this I'm going to gauge about how long I want it to be on this one. I'm not going to use all the hair. I only want about two thirds of it. And this is, this is a critical part. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to spin the hair and it just basically makes a cone all the way around the hook shank and it flares the hair out, gives it a big profile without a lot of material being used. So I'm going to want it. <clears throat> about like so. So I'm going to hold it in and I'm going to spin my thread just like that and what that does it twists the thread so that it actually grips the hair fibers. I'm going to wrap once, twice, three times and you see I haven't pulled that tight at all. I've just held it in place. Now I'm going to start cinching it down and I'm letting go. Kind of help it around a little bit. Get it on all the sides, make sure I got it nice and even as much as I can. I'm going to cinch it down. So I've got all of this mess out here. One thing you could do if you wanted, if you wanted to, if you just wanted all that hair, if you were doing a ma mainly an olive fly or an olive colored fly, you could just come in and fold this back like so and then tie in front of it. Personally, I don't like how that looks and I don't think it gives a good imitation. So what I do, what I do is hold down the tail section that I'm gonna keep and I cut it away. And yes, it is aggravating when you cut the wrong fibers and have to start over. So just be careful, go slow. All right, so now we've wound up with a nice even front. I'm gonna tie that out. Now we're ready to start adding more color. So at this point, instead of spinning the hair as I put it on there, I'm gonna put hair on in sections at a time so that it's only on the top, so that the top is one color. It's gonna be olive on the top, yellow on the bottom. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna set a piece of another set of I'm gonna set another piece of olive on the top here and tie it in, and then I'm gonna show you how to alternate back and forth between the olive and the yellow. Hold it on there, I've laid it in, I've measured it. You know what I didn't do? I didn't spin my thread. One, two, three. Now I can kind of adjust it again. Now I'm gonna, instead of letting this spin, I'm gonna cinch it down and hold it in place. Just like so. Now, I've got olive on the top and as that gets wet and you pull it through the water strip and it, it's gonna lay back really nice. So here again, Achieve what I wanted to there. I'm going to trim off the front.
cinch that down real good. I'm going to flip it over. So we moved the camera a little bit just to try and give you a better perspective. I know a lot of times my hands are in the way covering stuff up, but I'm trying to explain it on a before and after so you can see the, the finished result and, and hopefully understand it really well. So I'm just going to pick right back up and put it, you know, start with the yellow. So I'm going to spin my vise upside down. And you see where I smashed the barbs on the worm hook down. So now we're going to start laying the yellow in there. Here again, I'm looking for, looking for the nice long fibers. There we go. This one's going to have a lot of guard hairs underneath to get rid of. Makes a nice big mess. So I'm going to measure it out. This time I'm still going to use only about two thirds of it. I'm going to have to cover it up again to hold it. Well, you see, I'm only gonna I'm gonna tie and only use about two thirds of of what I've play of what I've cut off of the bucktail. Three wraps, cinch it again, again. You kind of twist it around, make it lay how you want it to. After it gets in the water, it's going to lay down a lot more naturally on its own. trimmed up. Cinch it down real good. All right, so now we've got the transition started. We've got olive top, we've got yellow bottom. And I'm going to repeat this process probably one probably two more times on the top with the olive and one more time on the bottom with yellow. And then that's gonna finish out the rear hook for the fly. Measured out using about two thirds. One, two, three. Pretty important to get it trimmed up as close as you can because it just makes it that much easier when you go to lay down 
your other deer hair. So I'm gonna cinch it out, finish it up, clean it up a little bit. Now we're gonna go to yellow. This time I'm going to use a little bit more of the yellow. I'm going to use three quarters of it instead of two thirds. Because we're getting back, we're starting to get to the middle of the fly, the middle of the body of the fly, which is, you know, all bait fish are going to be a little bit bigger in the middle than they are out towards the end. Three. Twist it around nice and even. Cinch it. You know, I'm covering up a lot for you and I hate it, but there's really no other way to do it. It's just got all cinched down really nice. And another, another thing you can do if you chose to, I, I usually don't, unless I'm tying these flies for musky or something that's a little more voracious than a brown trout, is you can put a little bit of super glue in there right after each of your ties and that helps that helps hold it in. We won't need to for this one. So I got a nice big profile. And so this is what I was talking about. I've got really and truly a minimal amount of material on this hook, but it's also get, but it's given a nice big profile in the water. So you can see you're going to be able to see some of the some of the in between places uh, between you know where the hair has been laid in there. There's a lot of different ways you can cover it up. The way that I, I don't worry about it too much because in the water, you're stripping this fly, even in gin clear water, you're stripping this fly, you're making it swim pretty fast. The fish that you're wanting to catch, if, if he's concerned about seeing this, you got bigger problems. That fish doesn't care. He's committed and he's gonna eat. So don't get too worked up about it. So I'm gonna finish this one out with one more piece of olive one more piece of olive up near the eye of the hook, and then we'll move on to the articulation. So again, I'm probably gonna switch now to about 75%, three quarters, of the hair instead of two thirds because I want that bigger profile. One, two, three. There we go. Now she's looking right. And if you chose to, you could leave the head on this one a little bit bigger. You don't have to trim it all the way down like I did on the other ones. You can leave the head a little bigger around the eye of the hook there. It won't hurt a thing. It kind of covers it up, makes it look a little nicer. So now I'm just going to whip finish it. Cinch it down, cut it, and now I am going to glue it because that's going to hold the whole fly together. So you see what we have? We got the night. We got a nice, 
tail section here. It's all going to blend in really good. Now you can see why the four alt hook, you can't even see the four alt hook back here now. But the trick is, is when the fish bites, when the fish bites, the hook is exposed. And so now you've got the right amount of hook exposed in comparison to how much material is wrapped around the hook shank. So that's why we use the four alt hook. Whatever you do, don't touch that. It's not much fun. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the articulation part. Take this fly out. It's gonna get right back there in the hook keeper. So out of the way, I'm going to take another of the same 4 alt Gamakatsu round bend worm hook. Pinch these barbs down. Okay, so this is one of the hardest parts. This is what everybody really seems to have a hard time with is, is attaching the rear fly or the rear hook to the front hook. And there's a number of different materials you can use. I like to keep things as simple as possible. That way, no matter where I am in the world and I need, and I need something, I can usually walk into a store and buy it. So I use the Trilene Big Game 30 pound. This is in you know, the, the bright green color. It doesn't matter, you can use clear, you can use red, you can use the green. It really doesn't matter, none of it's exposed. This was what was available, so that's what I got, and it works just fine. So the trick to attaching the articulation, or attaching the rear hook to the front hook, you know, because the hook eyes are running like this, so you have to make a loop when you attach it that stays like this. So that's the idea that you want for back there. So the way we do that is I'll lay a little bit of thread on. I'm going to take my piece of 30 pound big game. I'm going to lay it right on the side, right on the side, just to get it started. And this, this is critical because you really got to snug it tight. So the bobbin that I'm using has a ceramic tip, so it's not abrasive on the gel spun. And I always hold my hand right up here close to the end because you really got to snug this tight to hold it in place. I'm going to wrap it just about two-thirds of the way up the hook shank, and then I'm going to come back.
trim the tag. So now the other part of attaching the rear hook, I use just whatever glass beads you can find, wherever you can find them at your tackle shop. These are Sea Striker. It just happens to be what I had. Again, the color doesn't matter too much. I kind of like the red because it gives a little bit of contrast in the middle of the body of the fly, but I use two beads. Thread them on. Then we're going to thread the eye of the hook. Maybe I will. It's going to come through like that. Yep, super glue right on my hands. And so now you want to come back through both beads. Super glue. I got super glue on that thread there. So you want to come back through both beads. Just like so. And then I'm going to lay this. I'm going to lay my line, my monofilament big game line, I'm going to lay it over top of the, of the line that I already cinched down. And in that way, it makes a perfectly straight connection so that your, flies, your, your rear hook is not running sideways or in reverse. You can tie it in reverse with one hook down and one hook up if you want. For brown trout, this seems to work the best. So I'm going to pull it right up there, holding her tight. I'm going to have to cover some of this up with my hands because there's, that's the only way I can do it and actually get it to work. So you're not going to be able to see some of this. But you see how I've got the line laid right on top of where I cinched it in before. That way you've got a stacked loop out here at, your, at the head of your rear hook. See how much pressure I'm putting on and moving my vise all over the place. So I've got it all wrapped out there, same distance. All right, so that was the hardest part of making any, any articulated fly is getting the hook to run, getting both hooks to run in line with each other instead of this one in the back being turned. And it's gotta be loose enough here so that the fly will actually swim and wiggle. And what you want when, when you're tying these flies what you're trying to achieve is you, you, you want the fly, when you're stripping it, you want it to come straight on a really sharp pull. And then as soon as you stop stripping, you want the fly to turn. And the way to make that fly turn is you got to use a little more material in the back than in the front. So it's just like if you've ever pulled a boat, if you've ever pulled a big boat with a small truck 
and the boat wants to, you know, the boat's heavy and it wants to push the truck and it'll jackknife the truck and make it turn sideways. That's what we're doing with this fly is we want to make, we want to make the rear of this fly jackknife the front of that fly. You say, well, wow, what are you going to do for a head? How are you going to do all that? And so I'm going to go over that with the materials that I use for the head and how I tie everything up coming to the front so that this fly will make the whole, so that the rear hook and the materials on the rear hook will make the whole fly turn almost in a circle like a, like a bait fish or a, or a scared bait fish that's running away from a predator will swim away and then it'll turn around, it'll turn its head, it'll, it'll turn its head completely and then look back at whatever's coming to eat it. So that's what we're going to do with this fly. So we, we're started up here again. We've got everything attached. The tail is right. The hair on the rear, rear, rear hook is right. So now we're going to finish out with the front. So I'm going to bring my thread all the way back. And I'm not going to come all the way back here. I'm not going to come all the way back to the beads and to the end of the, to the, end of the, the shank. I'm going to stop about even with the hook point. Right there, I'm going to stop my thread even with the hook point. This is where I'm going to start tying. So first I'm going to do olive on the top. And since we're still in the middle of the body of the fly, I'm going to use a lot of material to get that bigger profile up top. And after it gets wet, and it'll, it's going to lay down a whole lot. It's really going to lay down a lot in the water and have the right profile for a baby brown trout. So here we go, I'm using about 75% of it. Yeah, buddy. I can see one in its future. Sometimes when you're tying and everything's going right. You know, you get one fly, that one special fly that all the stars line up and you just know that that one's going to run better, it's going to swim better, it's going to turn better, and it's going to fish better than the rest of them. And I'm kind of feeling it on this one. Go to yellow. Get rid of my guard hairs. I'm going to use as much of this hair because it's a little bit shorter. I'm going to use as much of this hair as I can. It's kind of tight here. down a little bit, now we're ready to do olive on the top again. 
So now I'm going to start tapering it back, and this time I'm only going to use about two-thirds of the hair as opposed to 75 or 80 percent. Snug it, wrap it, wrap it some more. As we're getting up here closer to the head, you want to make sure to get this trimmed down as much as you can so that you can continue to, to wrap. All right, I'm going to do one more yellow on the bottom. You see what I'm doing here? It's transitioning nice. You got the olive on the top, yellow on the bottom. And then as we get up closer to the head, I'm going to show you how I lay in the flank feathers that looks like a brown trout. Looks like it's a brown trout with spots. see how tough how hard I'm pulling on this gel spun thread that's why I like it it's good and strong you can snug it down really tight makes your flies durable makes it last if you were using just regular 3 aught thread I would have already popped it several times and you would have heard how unhappy I would have been about that so I've got her wrapped and cinched trim it up Okay, so I'm up here near to the head, and so it, when you reach this point, you've kind of got to start planning ahead, so to speak, um, with how you're going to attach the head. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can continue to finish up through here with, with more deer hair, keep stacking it and spinning it like I'm doing. You can do that, or you can do that and then glue your eyes on to the sides of it, or you can use the fish mask from fish skull and I like these because I think it gives a little more realistic look and it's a little more durable plus I, I think it helps make the rear hook force the force the front hook to jackknife and turn so I'm gonna keep wrapping just a few more I'm gonna put one more one more stack of olive on top and then I'm gonna show you how to Popovich wrap another piece of olive all the way around the front because you know when you when you look at brown trout in the water you know we got a lot of yellow here I don't want to continue on up with a whole lot more yellow because I want all this to kind of I want all this to kind of fall back and then I'm going to have a big yellow flank feather right there going down both sides so I'm going to put one more piece of olive on the top then I'm going to attach the flank feather and then I'm going to pop a bitch wrap with some more olive all the way around
Almost did it. I want to keep as much of this trimmed off because I want I want exposed hook. I want an exposed hook shank right up here near the eye so that when I spin when I spin it in Popovich style, it'll hair will spin all the way around just like it did when I tied it on at the very back. All right, that should be good. Okay, so another critical part of these flies and the materials is some of the feathers that we use. And I mean, you can see this, that you know, this is great for pike and musky flies. And, you know, truth be told, that's kind of where I got some, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these techniques I'm using, it's, it's not my own design. It's something that, you know, other people have, have came up with before me. I'm just taking it to another step and adding my own special twist to it to make it work for what I want it to work for. And that's the great thing about fly tying is you can take my ideas here for this fly change it up a bit, twist it around, and make it into something of your own. But these are these are 10 to, these are from whiting, whiting musky slapping. It's 10 to 14 inches, a lot of different sizes here. You can't find this stuff just anywhere. So it's kind of tough to find and it's a little expensive, but it sure does work for the flies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick, actually I'm going to pick two. They're nice and wide. They're going to lay on the side of the fly. And so when you lay this out on the side of the fly, it kind of gives the illusion of having, you know, the brown trout having his spots and having his par marks and, you know, being a nice tasty meal for, for something a lot bigger than him. That's a good one. And so literally I'm just going to lay this out. You don't always have to use it all the way to the tip. You can trim it out straight. I think on this one I'm going to use it all the way to the tip. And so what I'm doing here, I'm just I'm going to lay this feather out so that it comes back and it touches the tail. So now you've got contrast, you got black or black and yellow contrast all the way down the side of your fly. So I'm just going to lay that out. So there we go, we got one laid on there. Now I'm going to want another one for the other side. Pretty important that there's as close to the same as possible. That one's pretty close. We're going to call it close enough. So I'm going to spin my vise over. I'm going to lay it out. Adjust it to the right length. lay flat and run straight down the side so after I after I cinch them on there I come back and adjust them a little bit so there we have it we've got we've got our flank feathers on there down the side they're going to give a little more action in the water especially when the when the rear hook makes the whole thing jackknife so now I'm going to come up here and we're going to finish out the head 
I'm going to do that like I was talking about in a Popovich style. So I'm going to take a big piece. I'm going to use as much hair as I can because now I'm going to spin olive all the way around the front. That way it kind of lays back and it's going to cover up a little bit of that yellow and it's going to cover up a little bit of the flanks. Not much, just enough to give it a little bit more contrast and look natural. So I'm going to take a nice big long piece. I might even use a little, could use just a little bit more than a number two pencil on this one because you're going to, you're going to pull the fish mask all the way over top of it. Get rid of our guard hairs. So I've got it all stacked and straight. See how much I'm using here. So lay it up, spin my thread. One, two, three, and then I'm gonna let go of it and it's gonna spin just like so, all the way around. And you can kind of help it along. Wrap it again. Keep pulling. You can see every time I cinch down on it, it just keeps spinning and turning. And as it does that, you want to check every all the sides of your fly, and make sure you get an equal coverage. And right now I'm not, so I'm going to have to spin it a little more. You can help it along with your hand. But you want it to be nice and uniform and even as much as you can all the way around. That's about what I want right there. I got just a few fibers come that are going to lay down. They're going to lay down and come over top of some of the yellow, not all of it. But most importantly, what I've, what I've done here is I've, I've made myself a big base for when I glue my fish mask on, you got something for it to glue to and it helps to lay all the rest of these feather, the feathers, it helps to lay all the rest of this hair down. So I'm going to grab it real tight. Cinch it. Then I'm going to whip finish. I'm going to check it one last time. Make sure I didn't screw anything up. No, nope, it's all good. So I'm going to whip finish it. Well, that was less than ideal. So when that happens, and invariably it's going to, you put enough pressure on these flies, that's going to happen. Luckily, I'd already whip finished that. So now just to make sure that it's not going to come apart, all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it again. Just going to wrap it again. Trim my tag, and now I'm going to whip finish it one more time. trimmed up now we're going to glue it so use whatever glue you want use zappa gap use regular super glue use whatever it is that you want i like the gorilla glue it seems to dry a lot faster and tougher and you can really slather this up sit while I get my fish mask ready. So now we're going we're gonna to come down to the mask and what it does, how we attach it, 
while the super glue is drying there around the head. So this is just going to push right up onto the shank, push, push the hair and, and the fibers and the feathers back a little bit, make it lay down and look really nice. It's a good durable head. You can bang it off the rocks. Eventually they will break just like everything does, but it's a really good product. Easy to use and it's a lot less time consuming than trying to use a whole bunch of epoxy and everything to make your head. So, so that's how the thing is just going to, is going to slide right on there. So I so always test it. So now I see that I've got a little bit of fibers here that I'm going to have to trim up to make it look nicer. So that's, that's where we're going to go with it. So I'll just again take my super glue, put it on the inside of the mask, cover it really good. Try not to get my hands glued in it. Push it right on there. Oh yeah, there we go. Push it on in, get it on there good and straight. Make sure everything is even. Got a little bit of a mess out here near the hook eye. That's no big deal. I'll show you how to clean that up. One of the important things that you want to make sure of, and I've done this, but you know, don't forget, you still got a four alt hook right there. So when you're pushing, try to not have your hands down here underneath pushing on it because you'll wind up with a hook point all the way up in your finger. I've done it. It's uncomfortable and it's unpleasant and I don't recommend it. Okay, so that dries pretty quick. Now I can come back and clean this up a little. All right, so I'm going to put the eyes on. The fish skull mask uses 3 8 eyes. You can either buy the fish skull brand, you can buy Spirit River, doesn't matter. As long as it's a 3 8 inch eye for a number 10 mask, it's going to fit nice in there. There's a lot of different colors. You can get chartreuse in black, silver in black, whatever you want, whatever you like, whatever makes you feel good, do it. I like these because, you know, a trout really has these kind of eyes. So here again, this is another feat of trying not to cover your hands in super glue. But I'll put just a little bit. Right there. Drop the eye in. Press it. The eyes do have some adhesive on them, but it's nowhere near strong enough to withstand the punishment you're going to dish out to them. So you've got to super glue them.
So now I've managed to cover my hands in super glue, which is what I didn't want to do. That's it, so there she is. So now, the big, the big trick now, everything's finished up. If you wanted to, just to, I kind of I came a little bit too close here on the, on the hook eye, it's still got plenty of, plenty of space left to get it threaded up and it's gonna be fine. In some cases, if you push the head too far back, you'll have to come back with thread and wrap around it just to give it a nice clean finish. This one's gonna be fine, it's gonna fish just fine, so I'm not gonna worry about it. So now what I wanna make sure of is that everything is square and straight. I'm gonna take the fly out Make sure everything runs right, looks right. It looks like it does. My hooks are running the same. They're both turned down. There's not one running the other way. Everything lays out nice. And so that's it. That's my Chattahoochee Double Deceiver. And you notice I don't use a lot of flash. I don't use you know, a, whole, a whole lot of tinsel or anything else in it. It's just regular standard, you know, matte, matte finished colors, nothing too shiny. And it's really not a technical or complicated fly to tie. It's just really time consuming and uh, takes a lot of material and a lot of time, but uh, it's worth it. And that's it. So if you have any questions about the Chattahoochee Double Deceiver, you want to add some stuff to it, take away some stuff, you know, that's part of what fly tying is all about. It's about making it your own, taking something that someone else came up with and putting a twist on it and calling it your own and in no way am I going to proclaim that I am proprietarily invented any of this but it's a good fly it catches a lot of brown trout it's put a lot more big brown trout in my boat for my clients than any other big brown trout fly I've ever fished. So. Hey thanks for joining me today on In the Spread. Hope you enjoyed learning how to tie the Chattahoochee Double Deceiver and if you've got any questions at any time just please feel free to call me or email me or, or message me through in the spread what's on facebook we're on twitter we're on instagram uh, pretty easy to find and we're pretty easy to to get a hold of to answer questions for you so thanks a lot and i hope you enjoyed it thanks mm -hmm.